In any business, there is a point of origin and a point of consumption. What transpires in between is logistics. Last two years have been tough for many businesses across the world. But there were a few who turned the tide and emerged successful. Today, we'll be meeting one such business. Hi, I'm Aras Subramanya. Today, I'm taking you to a place where magic is woven with skeins of thread. Sue and Ta of Suta. Right? Hi. How are you? Good, good to meet you. Good to see you. Great meeting you today. The first syllables of your name, Su and Ta, we use magic. Yeah. How did we get here? It's a long story. But uh, yeah, me and Tanya, uh, you know, our father was in a transferable job. He was in the railways. And uh, we kept changing schools. So both of us were each other's constant. And uh, because of that, we also invented a lot of games, random games. One of them was selling, uh, you know, dolls made out of handkerchiefs on carts. So it was <laughs> very silly, but then we used to play that. <laughs> but it, it means entrepreneurship. We didn't know that. We didn't even know the spelling of it. Then we went on studying and uh, we studied a lot. But in 2013, we came to Bombay. I came because she was there and but then you know it, we kept asking ourselves that you know is this what we wanted to do we kept getting promoted we had good pay we were doing well but then that nagging feeling that we really wanted to create an impact where we really wanted to work with weavers and craftsmen we loved the process of weaving we loved textile one fine evening we realized that Su and Ta together comes and becomes Suta and it means thread in so many languages and and it also means daughters. So we were overwhelmed. We thought that this is it. So when we started Suta, we thought our target audience is going to be 25, 26 plus. So 25 to 35 and 35 to 45. But now we have realized that the, the second biggest audience is 18 to 25. So the way it changed um, it is fantastic. You see this younger, uh, you know, masses, they're just wearing saris with a lot of flair. They're wearing it to, to pubs and malls and parties, the farewells. So it's amazing to see how saris have made a comeback. Suta became this one-stop shop. Suta gives you like the blouses, you get the sari, you can accessorize it a lot, wear it with a shirt, boots, and you can just, you're on the go. And I think saris could make a comeback because of this. Actually, both of us would just go deliver parcels door to door. And there was one day, I think, um, there was a father and mother and the lady was in the US, so she ordered something. So, they photo a photo. Take, the, take a look and this is the product which is going to arrive. And I pressed the doorbell, we are standing outside, uncle opened. He's like, oh, Betty ne bola tha, this product is going to come. You yourself came. <laughs> you also came along. <laughs> yeah, it was so sweet. And we started getting orders from all over India and even internationally. Then we realized we definitely have to have a trusted partner because you can't do everything on your own. We researched a lot and uh, then we came across DHL Express. Since that start, I think 2016, yeah. till now we have been with DHL. And yeah. what happens is uh, logistics is such an integral part, right? Uh, customers don't see logistics as a different company. Mm. They think the parcel, parcel is out from Suta's warehouse means you are only coming and delivering. So it is so important the values of both the companies match, you know, the way it is delivered, the way the person talks, everything has to be seamless and in the same way. Especially for e-commerce, I feel, right? It's, there's no face, there's nothing else. So everything is this, the way it is delivered, it is that the last touch, right? See, this is exactly what we tell our customers. That's part of our proposition, which is that you leave logistics to trusted partners. Yeah. Then you can focus your all your energies on scaling up. Yeah. So, how many countries do you ship to now? Around 180 to 190 countries now, and we are so glad with this super proud moment for us. And uh, I know there's a scope to reach even more. Okay. <laughs> uh, some of the tools that DHL offers for our e-com shipments has helped us to be 100% compliant and that's a big deal. Yeah, because it just lets you sleep in peace, you know. Sometimes something can just come up and even for the staff, it becomes so easy. Yeah. Uh, they can do their work, focus on something else, right? And also at one time, uh, we get the invoice on the AWB. So it just makes our life super simple. We are happy. Yeah. How was the business during COVID? It was a very 
difficult phase for us. The work stopped, right? But then we couldn't have stopped. Everybody depended on us. If they looked up to us, oh, they are going to tell us something. So the 17,000 weavers, we even didn't stop even one weaver's work. So that, that time we were not 17,000. We grew um, three, 3.5 times in COVID yeah. uh, when the market yeah. opened. In the employee-wise, revenue-wise, uh, yeah. artisan-wise, everything grew because, you know, we had a, a backup plan in the company and we used that fund to onboard more people. We didn't know that if the market is going to open, should we do launches? Since we're in the house, I'm the photographer, she's the model. We created corners in the house to shoot. Mm -hmm. And we kept launching even then. And our customers who heard us, who heard our story, because we're very vocal about what we're going through, mm -hmm. they kept buying. And DHL was one of the partners who was following protocols and the freighters were working at that point in time. So uh, it helped us really a lot. Some of the tools of DHL, for example, the on-demand delivery, it has reduced our returns drastically. Mm -hmm. But sometimes returns do come by. But the entire process is so smooth. The way you handle it is so beautiful. For example, we get the alert the moment it enters India. So we know what to do about it. And also the clearance is super quick. So yeah, touch wood, yeah. So if I may ask, where do you see um, Suta um, 10 years down the line? Our goal is not in terms of numbers. You know, ideally you should say a certain number for revenue, but it's not that. We aim at working with as many number of weavers and artisans possible across India. And the biggest thing is that we want to provide them 365 days of work so that they don't worry about getting more work. At the end of the day, your growth is directly proportional to how happy your customers are. That's so true. Uh, even at DHL Express India, that's what we tell our customer support team, that they should be picking up customer calls within three rings be it calls, mails, or social media comments, we want to ensure that every single customer query is responded to. I see that both of you give so much of yourself to the brand. Uh, what is that one advice you will give to a young entrepreneur starting off now? Okay, so um, I feel as entrepreneurs, we um, do not let go of things. We hold on to what we do the best. We do not want to leave things because we feel we are best in this. We'll do this also the perfect way. Nobody else can do it. So hiring right team and letting go of things, giving them what others can do best and you can focus on something else. A little good luck charm for the journey ahead. Thank you so much. When the markets were tough, Tanya and Sujata persevered, adapted, and grew their business. We were very happy as a logistics service provider to play our part in their success story. I'll be back with yet another fascinating story of how Indian businesses are going global. <laughs>